In the early days of the Chinese Communist Party, and during the formation of the government that would go on to become the People's Republic of China, future dictator Mao Zedong infamously declared, we must fight for military power for the party and for military power for the people. Power grows out of the barrel of a gun. Fast forward to today, and those words still resonate within the CCP, the Chinese army, and especially are taken to heart by Xi Jinping. But what happens if the gun is in the hands of those least loyal to the party? Or worse, what if the gun doesn't function at all? You're watching Out There International, and welcome to our journey through the nuance of international affairs. Today, we embark on an exploration into the heart of China's military prowess, dissecting the intricate interplay between power, corruption, and projection. China's People's Liberation Army, referred to as the PLA, revered as the vanguard of the nation's strength, stands as a symbol and bellwether to the might and ambition of the country. Many of us are familiar with the images of rows of stoic PLA soldiers marching in sync at state military parades. But beneath the surface of this outwardly formidable force lies a shadowy realm of corruption and intrigue. Let's deep dive into the labyrinth of military power, uncovering the hidden intrigue that shapes the geopolitical landscape of East Asia and beyond. It is often the case that an outsider can view a country like China as a monolith, a large and well-oiled machine, unified in purpose, indivisible perhaps. But for some new to learning about China, we will see that is not the case. To truly grasp the complexities of corruption within the Chinese political system, let's take a moment to get some context. Though difficult to document, China has always had a corruption problem. Inferences can be made as we analyze historic purges of Chinese political and military leadership. To climb the ranks in Chinese leadership, you have to pay up. Many of today's senior officers likely greased the wheels of promotion early in their careers. Scandals and later purges range from China's Olympic organization, embezzlement of funds on local levels of government, pension reporting, to China's Food and Drug Administration, smuggling rackets, and the railroad system. One senior official actually stole $2.8 billion and moved it overseas before being caught. Punishments range from life in prison, death by firing squad, or possibly worse, disappearance from society. The fact of the matter is no leader is clean. Corruption is a matter of degree. This is structural, and this is prominent. What we have covered so far are examples of management of China's political system. Perhaps some level of corruption can exist and still allow for an effective governance of the country's citizens. But what about the management of China's military? There are questions that accompany an analysis of Chinese military expenditures. First is the size of the budget. As China ascends to great power status, rivals in the region watch closely to discern the true intentions behind its burgeoning defense budget. Are these investments indicative of a peaceful rise, or do they signal a more ominous threat on the horizon? Second, how efficiently are funds being allocated? How confident can Xi Jinping be in military capabilities? Correspondingly, how confident can rivals be as to the true fighting strength of the Chinese military? In this landscape of intrigue, recent events within the Chinese rocket force exemplify the high stakes. The recent purge of senior leadership over the last 18 months unveils the dark underbelly of China's military apparatus, where personal loyalty reigns and the quest for power overshadows clashes with concerns of competence and merit. Now, for the main focus of this video, corruption within the PLA rocket force. We focus on this story for two reasons. First is due to the strategic relevance of the rocket force, and second is because this development is an example of a situation that is typical of the type of environment Xi Jinping is trying to change. The rocket force is arguably the most significant branch for Chinese military power projection. China's air force is not as modernized as regional rivals, and similarly its navy, though growing, is not yet a true blue water navy with open ocean capabilities, or at least not to the level of the United States. As a result, any type of defensive action taken in response to an act of aggression by a rival or alternatively a military invasion of Taiwan will likely be led by the use of rockets. Also, and possibly more important, while ultimate decisions regarding the use of nuclear weapons would rest with Xi Jinping, it is the PLA rocket force that would be carrying out the orders. 
In July 2023, reports surfaced indicating that the force's commander Li Yuchao and his deputy Liu Guangbin were under investigation by the Commission for Discipline Inspection of the Central Military Commission. The subsequent removal of both Li Yuchao and Liu Guangbin from their posts sent shockwaves through the military establishment. A new leader, Wang Hubin, was swiftly appointed as the new commander of the PLA rocket force. However, the circumstances surrounding Li Yuchao and Liu Guangbin's expulsion remain unclear. Some reports suggest allegations ranging from straightforward corruption and embezzlement to even more serious unauthorized disclosure of military secrets. Other ousted officials are said to also include Zhou Yanning, former Rocket Force commander, Zhang Zhenzhong, a former deputy commander of the force, and former Air Force commander Ding Laihang. In total, nine senior leaders have been forced out. All nine reportedly once held senior positions in the Rocket Force, or the Central Military Commission's Equipment Development Department, which is also responsible for procurement. Li Yu Chao is the stereotypical case study of why discussions on Chinese military power must be taken with some grain of salt. Yu Chao was a prominent figure in the People's Liberation Army and the Chinese Communist Party. Graduating from the PLA National Defense University, he joined the PLA in December 1980, beginning a distinguished military career. Yu Chao rose rapidly through the ranks, serving in various capacities within the 2nd Artillery Corps, before assuming command roles at several bases throughout the country. He was ultimately appointed Chief of Staff of the PLA Rocket Force in April 2020. He further ascended to the rank of General in January 2022. So, where did things turn for Yu Chao? What sparked this recent purge? Some observers suggest that the substantial budget allocated to the Rocket Force creates fertile ground for corruption. This situation is exacerbated when data on equipment parts is falsified or when quality control measures are compromised, leading to concerns about the performance and safety of the force's weaponry. Yu Chao probably participated in the corruption but was likely the fall man. The opacity, the culture of corruption and self-enrichment, combined with the large budgets for procurement that the rocket forces allocated, it's possible he was even set up to fail. Essentially, corruption had become so rampant under prior leadership but came to a head under Yu Chao's watch. When revelations about significant issues plaguing the country's nuclear arsenal came to light, it was obvious that leaders were pocketing resources with impunity. According to reports from U.S. intelligence sources, many missile silos in western China were found to have non-functioning lids, while some missiles were reportedly filled with water instead of fuel. This news all underscores the high stakes of Xi Jinping's efforts for accountability and reform within the PLA generally and the rocket force specifically. Importantly, it also raises broader questions about the integrity and readiness of China's military capabilities. Li Yu Chao typifies everything wrong with that system. What can we learn from Li Yu Chao and the rocket force? The Chinese system creates an environment of personal and political corruption that results in an over-projection of Chinese military power and capability. Corruption is a pervasive issue in any political system, but the rocket force corruption scandal exemplifies how particularly entrenched and systemic it is within the Chinese political framework. The Chinese system fosters, for obvious reasons as a communist government, an environment where transparency to the citizens is minimal. Along with that, there's a significant incentive for lower-level leaders to only report positive developments to advance within the CCP hierarchy. The combination of limited transparency and the incentive structure creates a feedback loop, wherein lower-level officials prioritize relaying favorable information upward. Senior leadership, including Xi Jinping, likely received distorted or exaggerated assessments of military capabilities. This lack of accurate information leaves decision-makers with an incomplete or potentially exaggerated understanding of the country's military strength. What does this mean for regional rivals, especially Taiwan? Likely, this ongoing crackdown might dissuade Xi from risking serious clashes with other militaries in the next five to ten years. Is corruption becoming more manageable within China? Some levels of corruption are expected to persist within the PLA. Xi has made an effort to reduce the size of the enlisted military while increasing pay. The hope is that higher salaries will reduce the temptation posed by bribery or embezzlement, and therefore individual corruption. However, while this move may increase the PLA's professionalism, instances like this recent purge highlight the corruption more prominently. What's also unclear is if tainted officers can advance in the promotion race for downsized positions. Corruption still seems to be the norm in the PLA, even after Xi launched his anti-corruption crusade in 2014. 
How does this impact Xi and other Chinese decision makers? We don't know precisely what President Xi Jinping is thinking, but this recent purge tells us that there is a crisis of confidence. He is ousting leadership, but now prioritizing officials with personal loyalty above all else. These moves may reduce apparent corruption, but when loyalty is now held so highly as a criteria, Xi unwittingly may be introducing more problems. Returning to Mao Zedong's emphasis that the ability to project power on both the people of China and the world generally center on who is wielding the barrel of a gun. What does it mean for Xi Jinping and the CCP when they can't even be certain to trust the gun to function at all? What do you think? Be sure to leave a comment below. I've been your host for Out There International. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel to be alerted when we release more content.